This is Matt with the National Weather Service Chicago office located in Romeoville. The recent quiet weather of August 2013 offers the opportunity to look at some unique or gee whiz type aspects of us in the meteorology world. Today we'll be looking at satellite imagery, particularly visible satellite imagery. As a little precursor here to some of the satellite shots, what we'll be looking at are from Geostationary Observational Environmental Satellites, or GOES, satellite imagery. These satellites hover above the same location on Earth at about 22,000 miles up. By remaining over the same place on Earth, or rotating in a geosynchronous orbit as we say, they take imagery of the same location on Earth and thus by putting those images together meteorologists can see how clouds are changing in appearance, in structure, in coverage. From that meteorologists can glean the current state of the atmosphere and from there work on making a prediction or a forecast. Here is a look at satellite imagery that we call visible satellite which is basically the Sun as the flash photography of the uh, satellite images and we are looking at a loop from Sunday morning August 18th. A lot of neat aspects on here. First, downstate Illinois. You'll notice some of the brighter clouds here indicative of deeper cloud tops. You'll even notice a few uh, higher cloud tops there indicative of thunderstorms that were downstate Illinois while we were high and dry in northern Illinois. Early in the morning you'll see some river valley fog here in the Mississippi River Valley and its tributaries. That's common with high pressure overhead in the summer summer months. As we look up in the upper Midwest and the upper Great Lakes you'll notice kind of a milky white appearance amongst some of the clouds. A lot of those clouds are cirrus up there but there's also some milky white appearance in eastern South Dakota, northern Minnesota up over Lake Superior. That's actually smoke from forest fires in Idaho and western Montana that's drifted eastward with the jet stream. Now that jet stream is well north of the area during this imagery here and because of that, that has kept our weather very steady and consistent and not changing much here in mid-August. Let's zoom in to northern Illinois early on that morning and look at a few other interesting aspects. Again, you can see some of that valley fog northwest of Illinois there on the Wisconsin and Mississippi rivers. One thing you'll notice here on this imagery is some of these bright areas such as here. This is the urban metro area of Chicagoland that we see on satellite. One reason it's standing out so well here in August is that the canopy of vegetation and other foliage tends to be at its max this time of year. Other words, making the other locations darker in appearance. And so the urban areas or the city areas with less trees and foliage show up as as brighter areas. Also the sun angle is higher this time of year and that's one reason too they show up as lighter on this visible imagery. Can you notice other towns and cities on here such as Rockford, Bloomington Normal, Springfield, Decatur, Champaign-Urbana, Peoria, LaSalle, Peru? They're all uh, can be seen on this visible satellite imagery. You'll also notice interstates. The satellite is of a high enough resolution where you can see interstates, particularly here I-55, but even I-57, I-39, uh, and others are visible on this, this shot. This particular aspect here, when we loop this image, will not change. And that little bright area is actually a smoke plume from the cooling towers at a nuclear plant in Byron. And so here is a loop, again at the same time period as what we looked at earlier on a regional scope. And as we loop this through the morning, you'll notice the cumulus clouds develop. Again, cumulus clouds look like this uh, from ground level, but here's what they look like from space on the visible satellite. And they encompass the area by the afternoon. Now I'm going to freeze this loop here near the beginning of the cumulus development right here. And you'll notice some of the first cumulus development happens over the Chicagoland metro area. Well the metro area retains heat longer into the night so the Chicagoland area started this morning earlier, uh, warmer earlier than other locations and because of that they warmed up quicker to a temperature that allowed air parcels to rise to develop the cumulus clouds and that's why some of the first cumulus clouds developed there about a half hour before a lot of outlying areas develop cumulus clouds and so again this is common we do see this in the summertime as uh, as the urban heat island uh, warms up it can be one of the first areas to develop some of these fair weather cumulus clouds 
As we skip ahead here, you'll see the cumulus expand in just the next 15 minutes. You'll notice some of this cumulus develop also a little quicker than other outlying areas. If I toggle topography on here, in other words, elevation, we don't often think about this in northern Illinois, but there is a decent change in elevation in some locations, and this includes in this part of Lee, DeKalb, and far northwest LaSalle counties. If you've ever drove out on Interstate 39, you'll notice a lot of wind turbines as part of wind farms on this little ridge area, which is about 200 feet up from some adjacent lower areas. Because of that higher ground, the air parcels didn't have as far to rise to reach that temperature where condensation occurred to develop cumulus, and that's one reason some of the cumulus clouds there developed uh, about a half hour earlier than some other outlying areas. So kind of a gee whiz aspect there on satellite. As we go forward into the early afternoon here, as you look towards Chicagoland and Lake Michigan, you'll notice it's cumulus free, including into land here. Well, what's happened here is that with high pressure overhead, the lake breezes have expanded out in all directions into Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, the cooler temperatures over the water, more dense air, and it pushes that less dense warmer air over land away, and that's what we call the lake breeze. And so because of that, that air is stable in the low levels, and it can't rise and condensate and develop the cumulus clouds. So for instance, if you were downtown Chicago on this Sunday for the air and water show, you likely saw very few clouds at all, while inland we saw this fair weather cumulus, and that's because of Lake Michigan's influence. So thank you for joining me for this little gee whiz presentation about some of the interesting aspects that we see daily as meteorologists on satellites. Feel free to check our website, weather.gov slash Chicago, or follow our social media pages on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube for more gee whiz aspects of meteorology.